in fact you asked as well like I, I wanted to bring up something personal because I've really sort of seen it myself I think it's worthwhile sharing is uh the metabolic so we talk about respiratory but the metabolic side would be my own case um so like I tested myself back on the it's like around the 10th of September last year and up to that point well by the way I've entered the half Ironman in a, in in Cork in August right so I, I before that I was a um, sort of a middle distance adventure racer and also only really had time with a toddler she's two and a half now but like say she, when she was like I was only going out for 5k runs I didn't have a load of time so that was me for like say all of 2019 and into 20 and then I tested myself like I said and we'll see uh like how l the the metabolic efficiency i had i didn't have like i was yeah, very much why, why don't you if, if you're comfortable with it why don't you share uh with our audience uh your initial test results oh yeah no I'm just that. all right so uh for the, for the benefit of everyone uh we'll we'll try and explain a little bit of what's going on here so yep. this is what we refer to as a ramp test um, you can see the increases in, in there's a three minute warm up where Jonah's pointing. Yeah, that's uh, five. You'll, you'll see uh, one every one minute an increased uh, intensity. And you can see yep. this is a treadmill test. So you'll see speeds being demonstrated at each of the levels. Uh, in addition, yeah, to that, so on the screen is heart rate, green line. You'll yep. see, uh, again, the speeds are in the steps themselves. And you'll see in red is his, is his fat. And but, well, I've got it like fat is like dark green. I apologize. Then, I am colorblind. Oh, right I, I, maybe, maybe I'll take over from here, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. So the dark green line is my, uh, is, a, is a line that's kind of, um, showing how many, how much my fatty acid oxidation or how the fatty acids that I'm using to fuel my, my run. And then the light blue is my carbohydrate usage as a fuel. So you can see well, when we look at people, what we're looking for is, uh, a, a late activation of carbohydrate, which indicates, you know, if you're, if you're firing carbohydrates up early, um, and I'm going to get a bit technical here. You're moving from the aerobic system to more into the glycolytic system, moving yeah. towards anaerobic, which is fueled mainly by uh, carbohydrate. Whereas um, if you look at the fat, it's mainly fueled through the uh, aerobic system. Mm -hmm. And uh, both are oxygen dependent. Mm -hmm. And uh, we go into this a lot more in the certification program. Yeah. No, I know, I know where you stand on that. Yeah. <laughs> but you can see, um, even at a low intensity, so 5.1, that's kilometers an hour, correct? Yeah. Kilometers an hour. Yeah. That's my warm up uh, with a heart rate of like, should be around 90 is around. Yeah. Around yeah, a, late, uh, late 90, 100. Around a hundred beats, uh, that John has already activated carbohydrate. And this is a, this is a strong indication of uh, what's happening at his cells. So his muscle metabolism, um, it has a poor ability to burn fat. Yeah. And this will be related to the number of mitochondria or the number of capillaries available in the, in the muscle. But it also is a strong indication of past training. You can always, yeah. Which, you can always dissect people's last three to six months of training by looking at the results on metabolic analysis. Right. And, and that's why I gave my intro there. Yeah. That I, uh, I was not into, um, I wasn't into fun runs. I was into hard, like, and I live in a hilly area and it was always just intense training sessions, basically. Yeah. Uh, and, and what that does is it kills mitochondria and capillary, capillaries. Um, and any kind of long, slow stuff is, and frankly, long, slow in zone five will increase capillary, uh, Capillarization and mitochondrial density, which will allow your muscle to burn fat uh, yeah. better and for longer. And the other thing that we can note from this is, um, if you can, you indicate the crossover for us. Yeah. Kind of, so the, yeah. this would indicate the um, end of zone two for him, if this makes sense. 
Zone two is where you move from. Uh, they cross over to the peak. Yeah, you move from free fat. fatty acid burning over to glycogen or glycolysis where carbohydrate becomes a priority so fuel source uh, for the energy system. So uh, what did you end up doing with this knowledge? Right, like, but like you said there, you know, if you want to improve your mitochondrial content density and, and capillaries, you want to work in accurate zone two with that zone five speckled, you know, intervals within that training session. So I took that on board. Like I, 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 I basically did my zone two, which was, uh, I think it was, I have it here. It was like between, I try and keep my heart rate below 115. It was quite difficult. Yeah. You know, you know, the average might come out at about 120 and that was doing well, you know, after that kind of hour, hour 45 minute run. Um, and I, I will say that I, I, it, they were fasted runs as well because this will also enhance this sort of push towards uh, fat burning effectively. So That's I was doing a, a fasted run in the morning. Great addition from a, a person with a background in nutrition. I love that. You know, yeah, just, like, just adjusting the availability of carbohydrates um, and fats yeah. will, will also have an effect on your fat burning ability. Well, well done. Yeah, like it's not just the intensity, although the intensity is like the bigger factor here. So definitely was strict with my runs, trying, and I kept it in. A, I, I, I stayed away from the hills. I went down to the lo the lake, kept it low level, or, you know, flat land. And um, yeah, so I also include the odd bike, but I was running around two to three times a week, and each run would have been at least over 45 minutes. So they weren't mega long, but they weren't less than 45 and uh, they were like 9K, you know, 9, 8K. And I actually have interesting numbers that I was, my, my pace is around six and a half minutes for a kilometer, maybe even a little bit more than that. And I uh, kept that going. And then I, I then looked at my scores. I got a, a retest basically on the, what was it? The 15th of January. So it was a good nine weeks later. But I remember checking my data and metrics before that test and i was up to like a five minute 55 uh per kilometer from like 635 so it was a nice little jump within that same heart rate range like you know maybe 125 heart rate average so i i guess i was like okay what's going on it'd be great to test it again and see what the what the score is and what'd you find so, on that what'd you find on the retest about nine weeks later the retest then uh can you guys see that now, Daniel, or maybe I need to? Yeah. You see a different screen? Yeah. Oh, cool. So yeah, this is my retest. This was on the 15th of January. Same sort of time of day, same sort of, uh, you know, avoiding the, following the protocol of not messing and eat and drink, or having like an intense exercise session the day before. So I kept everything consistent and there's the same protocol as well, by the way, the five kilometer per hour warm up, and you can just see a, a very different uh, fat carbohydrate um, pattern. Yeah, absolutely. Need to keep going. Yeah, yeah like the crossover happens much later. We, yeah, we even at the beginning, you 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 know, there's not even the degree. You, you almost activated uh, immediately uh, before. Yeah. Whereas you, what you do is your carbohydrate. Uh, Contribution is relatively small, whereas your yeah, fat contribution is even higher than it was before. So, the the if you look at these are kilocalories per minute. Um, yeah. so therefore, you can see that you've gone up to eight kilocalories eight. per minute, where you were lucky to hit six before. So you're pulling such a a lot more um, a lot more energy is coming from yeah. uh, from fat. As opposed to like the 1.2 kilocalories per minute from the carbohydrate at the same intensity. Yeah, yeah. And you've kept a mixed fuel source for a lot longer period before glucose becomes clearly uh, the choice. The, the main, yeah. In around like 12 kilometers per hour speed, starts to split there at 155 heart rate, 153. Yeah. Uh, drop, yeah, drop a little bit to your left, just right at the crossover. There. Well, the, yeah, about 150. So, yeah. You know, what's nice is, uh, 
you know, we're, we're able to change your zone too significantly. Massive. Um, you know, we're talking of, of 20, of, oh, 20, 20 plus beats to the right. And, um, you know, the obvious prescription for you would be to continue establishing your base, what people refer to as your base, which was really your ability to burn fat uh, effectively and efficiently um, and keep you kind of, you know, that one, 130 to 150 but, area yeah, to be able to get you to continue to burn more fat, but even more importantly, drop the carbohydrate even further down. Yeah, like that's what I ended up doing you know and my new my new zones is like yeah 137 to 150 so I, for instance I, the other couple of days ago a 521 pace was wow. still within now my new zone two of 141 average heart rate so can i, can I, I make a comment about this is where people who train on pace um versus heart rate uh this is a real problem for people is the fact that your pace will change significantly in response to physiological changes. Uh, I'm a firm believer that anything in zone one to three uh, has really very few functional benefits, but they have huge physiological benefits. So I think it's really uh, important to use heart rate zones, uh, especially for your medium to low intensity work. You may do wattage or speed intervals that are that have a functional basis. They, you want to increase your coordination, your turnover. You want to, mm. if you're on a bike, you want to increase your ability to turn the pedals efficiently at 380 watts. You have a functional goal. Then training on, on watts or speed makes sense. But uh, down here, when you're mainly interested in improving your physiology, uh, yeah. using heart rate is extremely important. And, and that's when you have a, a need for this so this is what i'm finding like i had a an, a an athlete in and he's a very proficient runner he's new to the bike and i got the luxury of testing him across both um both disciplines and he 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 doesn't have uh this poor low-end metabolic issues like i did in when he's running but he does when he's cycling which i found really interesting so i suppose he's he's new to those muscle groups and he's going to follow his zone two more for his bike, but he does no requirement for him to really work in the low zones for his running. Well, that's, what's great when you're working with triathletes is the fact is the limiter on the bike will be different than it is on, yeah. on the run. Your zones will be completely different and what you're working on should be different yeah. uh, in response to those limiters. And uh, I, I always love comparing people's performance on the run versus on the bike. And there's some stuff that becomes very clear. Like you said, inefficiency will show yeah. is, you know, a loss of the bottom end, top end. But you can find people that are on the bike when they're seated on the bike and they have their hands on the bars, their respiratory system performs well. You get them upright and running and they can't breathe well at all. And yeah. you do not know that if you didn't test them on both. And therefore, your training approach would be completely different for both modalities. To book a sales consult, contact Panoe Sales at info at mypanoe.com. To learn more about our products and services, attend our three-part Panoe webinar series. Register by contacting Zoe at zoe at mypanoe.com. To learn more about the Panoe Metabolic Analysis Certification Program, View our video at community.mypanoe.com or contact Zoe at zoe at mypanoe.com. And don't forget to join us on Instagram.